This is an American alligator. I have a seven-foot Nile crocodile that has been trying to kill everybody in sight, um, which is my favorite animal, but I love the alligator as well. All right. We're going to put tape on his mouth right away just because I'm nursing a bunch of little injuries. Oop, hand and mouth is not good. Chubby, you're so chubby. And what you'll see me do in a second is put, press his eyes down and pull his, pull his head back some, but not further than this, unless I'm in a lot of trouble with the big animal. The reason why I don't, how many people have seen people rub the alligator's belly and put him to sleep? Ever see that? Never seen that? You guys asleep? You have seen? Well, it doesn't really put them to sleep. It makes them pee on you is what it really does. <laughs> behind, behind their jaw, there's a bundle of nerves. When, say this hand is the alligator's head. Once you press the head back, it, it uh, pinches the nerves, and then he loses the ability to hold his head up at all. Then they flip him over. The weight of his head not, puts him over the rest of the way, cuts off the oxygen and blood to his brain, and then he's knocked out cold. There is no research to show my argument, really, except I have a little bit of my own. Um, I believe when you do that to an alligator, sooner or later you can cause brain damage from knocking him out because it's not a natural thing. There's no research to back it up, um, but it's like someone choking you out. For, see, some places do it four or five times a day. We rotate our animals. I've got about 15 alligators right now. Um, so we rotate the animals, and I don't do that, do that, but some places will use the same alligator four or five times, six times a day. And getting choked out until you pass out that many times a day can cause brain damage and can, in fact, kill you. And if you study fighting, like the ultimate fighting and stuff like that, we've learned that when we choke people out, we've got to let go right away because you can actually kill them. Um, I have seen alligators, very friendly alligators, traveling around to Tonight Show and doing all the circuit, dog tame. And I've seen those same alligators snap and go ballistic and try to kill their owner. And when they snap, it's, it's like the animal is a completely different animal, and, I'm, and it's always been, I've seen this about five recorded times that I've recorded, um, it's always when they're doing this where they pull the head back and, and pretend that they're rubbing the animal's belly. So it's always after the animal's been choked out, then the animal has snapped and gone ballistic. And in some cases, an al a very famous alligator named Fred uh, died. Uh, so I don't do that, and if I'm in a predicament uh, with an alligator, that's going to kill me, and, that's, and I'm on his back, and it's the only way I can do it, then I'll do it that once, but I've, I've only had to do that a couple of times. Uh, pretty much I can run away from animals that are flipping out or ride it out and go back and try again. This alligator is right around uh, 50 pounds. He may not look it, but you can, I'll let some people hold that. He's solid, just a solid American alligator. He's about two years of age. Uh, my alligators hatch out six to nine inches, um, and I do take in alligators that come from all different places. This one I have not had his whole life. Um, but I have a good estimate on his age. And then they grow about four feet their first year, sometimes a little less, and genetics have a lot to do with that, you know. Um, I'm the tallest one of seven in my family. My dad came over off the boat from Italy at five feet. He was a giant, you know. So uh, you got alligators that are 14 feet, and you got alligators that are 10 feet. Um, the girls are usually six to 10 feet and a few hundred pounds. I work with uh, uh, some boy alligators in Florida, one I named Baby Yui, who's 13 and a half feet long and about 1,400 pounds right now.